This is a presentation about bat-friendly forestry, including actions that land managers can take to provide bat habitat. This information is provided by Aiken County Land Department. Bats are primary predators of night flying insects. They consume moths, beetles, and other destructive pests. For this reason, they play an essential role in maintaining forest health. Minnesota has seven species of bats, including the northern long-eared bat, which is proposed to be listed as an endangered species. The northern long-eared bat is proposed to be listed primarily due to white nose syndrome. The Fish and Wildlife Service lists forest management as a potential threat to northern long-eared bat. Perceived forest management threats include mortality from summer harvesting and loss of roosting habitat. Aiken County Land Department's forest management practices provide habitat for a wide variety of wildlife species. Surveys have shown that northern long-eared bat is likely widespread and healthy in the county. The following presentation illustrates habitat management approaches used in the county and related to forest dwelling bats. The Aiken County Land Department manages a variety of forest types. About 68% is upland deciduous forest including aspen, birch, maple, basswood, and oak. About 67% of the forest is in stands with an average tree diameter of five inches or larger. From 2009 to 2013, the annual timber harvest impacted less than 2% of the forest. Over half is in partial harvest that removed less than 50% of the trees. Due to the numerous wetlands in Aiken County, only about one-third of the Land Department's forest has potential for summer access harvesting. This is based on soil characteristics and proximity to roads. Nearly 20% of the Aiken County Land Department's annual timber harvest occurs in the summer months. Combined with an annual harvest rate of less than 2%, that means that more than 99% of the forest is not impacted during this critical roosting period for forest bats. Even though it is a small portion, the summer harvest provides about 11,000 cords of wood with a value of around $300,000. Because summer access timber is scarce, it is worth more money than winter access timber and it is important to local businesses. Roosting trees are often considered the most important habitat component for bats. And the most important action forest owners can take to maintain bat populations is to provide a continuous supply of potential roost trees. Examples of good bat roosting trees include live cavity trees and dead snag trees, especially those with loose bark, cracks, or crevices. The Land Department has been documenting snag trees in the forest reinventory process for the past several years. The data indicates some variability by forest type with an overall average of five snag trees per acre and an average diameter of 13 inches. This is based on sampling over 34,000 acres. Reserve patches include areas of retained trees. Reserve patches can provide a variety of forest benefits, including a seed source for the regenerating forest and a continuing source of cavity and snag trees. The Aiken County Land Department has used reserve patches for decades. Staff recently revisited some reserve patches from past harvested areas to evaluate if they are providing the desired results. Preliminary results indicate that these patches are serving their function. Aiken County Land Department implements a variety of harvest prescriptions that are balanced between high intensity regeneration harvests and low intensity intermediate treatment harvests. Each of these approaches is used to meet forest objectives and can be implemented in a manner that is beneficial to forest bat habitat. High intensity harvests, such as clear cuts, can create habitat for bat foraging, provide new growth and food sources, and include keeping reserve trees as potential roosts. High intensity harvests are utilized to regenerate forest types requiring nearly full sunlight and account for 48% of Aiken County Land Department's annual harvest. The Aiken County Land Department retains 
more than 11% of the stand as reserved live wildlife trees, typically in small reserve patches. As the forest ages, these become many old forest patches within the regenerating forest, providing a continuous supply of snags and cavity trees. This image shows an aerial view of an aspen clearcut with reserve patches. This is another view of an aspen clearcut with reserve patches. And this is the view from the ground. This image shows a reserve patch and snags in an aspen clearcut. Reserve patches include wildlife trees, as well as snags and down logs. These habitat elements are important for bats. Low intensity harvests, such as thinning or group selection, are utilized to increase the growth and quality of forest types and account for 52% of Aiken County Land Department's annual harvest. These partial harvests remove less than 40% of the trees in order to increase growth on the potentially highest value trees. Snag and cavity trees are retained during these harvests. Low intensity harvesting includes thinning. Thinning removes weak or suppressed trees and creates growing space for the remaining healthy trees. Thinning benefits bats by increasing flight space and increasing growth of habitat for the bat's insect prey. Thinning in pine stands occurs primarily in the summer due to the well-drained soils typical of pine forests. Exposure to more sunlight stimulates plant growth in the understory. This is an image of a hardwood thinning, showing the retention of snag and cavity trees. Group selection is another type of low intensity harvest. It includes removal of small groups of trees for regeneration of a new age class. Group selection promotes diverse forest structure and can be favorable to bats. Group selection harvests remove 20 to 30% of the trees by creating small canopy openings, about a half acre in size. This encourages forest stand diversity in terms of species and age structure. Species like oak and birch can regenerate in upland hardwood canopy openings. Forest bats and birds roost in the mature trees and feed on insects in the lush openings. Snag trees are also retained in group selection openings. Selection harvest is another type of low intensity harvest. It includes removal of individual trees more or less uniformly throughout the stand. Selection harvest maintains diverse forest structure and can enhance habitat. In this harvest, Individual trees were selected to create regeneration gaps of various sizes covering 10 to 20% of the stand. Here is another view of a hardwood selection cut. Once again, snag and cavity trees are retained. Another consideration with bat-friendly forestry is riparian forest management, which includes maintaining the integrity of riparian zones in managed forests. Vegetative communities associated with water are the most important habitats for most bat species. Riparian areas are one of the highest quality foraging habitats available to bats. Selective harvest that minimizes disturbance can enhance riparian bat foraging habitat. When harvesting near water bodies, riparian buffers are retained for water quality, visual quality, and habitat purposes. This is an aerial view of the Willow River, the same river shown in the previous slide. There have been a number of forestry activities in the past few decades in the vicinity of this river, but a forested buffer of more than 200 feet has been maintained to protect water quality in the river and maintain habitat. This aerial photo illustrates reserve patches and wetland buffers. Snags and cavity trees are also retained in wetland buffers. Bat-friendly forestry retains roost trees, diverse habitats, and productive forests. It's also good forestry. These practices are good for forest-dwelling bats and the local economy. 
By improving our understanding of bat-friendly forestry, perhaps we can change the perception that forest management is a threat to bats. We know bats are good for forests. Maybe our management can be good for bats as well. More information about forest management and bats is available from a variety of organizations, including Bat Conservation International. For more information about Aiken County Land Department, please visit the county's website. The information in this presentation was prepared by the Aiken County Land Department and presented with assistance from Dovetail Partners.